In the previous video, we looked at Revelation 20 verses 1 through 3, which tell us that the angel with the key to the bottomless pit will lay hold on the dragon and bound him a thousand years and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years are fulfilled and after that he must be loosed for a little season. The angel with the key, we're told in Revelation 9, is a star, and the bottomless pit represents at least two things. In Revelation 9, it represents a crater left on the earth by the asteroid, and in Revelation 20, it seems to represent the region of space that is under our solar system. The dragon in Revelation 20 represents, on one level, a comet. Therefore, one layer of meaning to verses 1 through 3 is that a star will cast a comet to the region of space that is south of the ecliptic and will bind the comet in that region for a thousand years. And that will occur after the comet casts a stone to the earth. And when it speaks about the deceiving of the nations in verse 3, one part of that is explained in Amos 5, verses 7 and 8, which, as we've discussed before, tells us that the beast has changed the time of wormwood and made quiet truthfulness in the earth. In other words, the world government has hidden the truth about this comet. So when Revelation 20, verse 3 talks about the dragon deceiving the nations, on one level, it refers to the deceiving of the nations about the comet. But there's another layer of meaning to this because the bottomless pit also refers to the crater left on the earth by the asteroid impact, where it says in verse 2, and he laid hold on the dragon. That phrase, he laid hold on, corresponds to one word, number 2902, which also means took possession of, hold in check, or restrain. So it says, and he restrained the dragon. And in verse 3, the word translated as him, number 846, also means it. So, and cast it into the bottomless pit. And the word translated as cast, number 906, also means lie or lay. So, and it laid. Then the word translated as into, number 1519, also means in. So it's saying the dragon was restrained and it laid in the bottomless pit. Then the word translated as and, number 2532, also means even. Then the word number 2808, which means without pity. So it laid in the bottomless pit, even without pity. Then the word 2808 again, which also means obstructed from heaven. So it laid in the bottomless pit, even without pity, obstructed from heaven. Then the phrase set a seal corresponds to word number 4972, which also means concealed. Then word 1883, which means above. So concealed above him or concealed above it. And this word translated as deceive, number 4105, also means be out of the way of the nations, or word 1484, which also means multitude. Then word 3363, which means albeit not, and 2089, which means anymore. So, be out of the way of the multitude, albeit not anymore, till the thousand years be fulfilled. And notice the word translated as till, number 891, also means while. So it can say, while the thousand years are being fulfilled. Then the word translated as after, number 3326, also means with. And the word translated as that, number 5023, also means these things. So, and with these things, it must. Then word 3089, which means be deprived of authority. And word 5550, which means season or while. So, verse 3 can also be translated as saying, And it laid in the bottomless pit, even without pity, and concealed above it, that it should be out of the way of the multitude, albeit not any more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and with these things it must be deprived of authority for a little while. 
So there are actually three layers of meaning in these verses. First, after the stone hits the earth, the comet will be cast back into space and bound in orbit around a star. Second, a part of the comet will be left behind laying on the earth. The stone from the tail of the comet will be lying in the crater that it makes on earth. And at that point, the deception concerning this comet will no longer be in effect. In other words, the truth will come out at that point. So the dragon, i.e. the comet, will be in two places at that point. Part of it will be left on the earth in the crater where the stone from the tail hits, and the rest of the comet will be cast back out into the bottomless pit of space. But there's also a third layer of meaning to these verses. The dragon also represents the fallen angels who are persecuting the multitude. In verse 2, the word translated as devil, number 1228, means false accuser. And the word translated as Satan, number 4567, means adversary. So it's also talking about the dragon, which is the false accuser and adversary. In other words, the fallen angels who are persecuting the multitude right now. We discussed that in the Revelation 12 video. But also notice it mentions the serpent, which Genesis 3 tells us is the image of a serpent. So this refers to the image mentioned in Revelation 13, the disguise that the fallen angels wear to make themselves look human. The prophecy says over and over that their image technology will be taken away when the asteroid hits. So the third layer to this is that the fallen angels will be deprived of authority and their image technology will be restrained and the false accuser will be bound. So three layers of meaning in those first three verses of Revelation 20. Then verse 4 says, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Many believe this is all one group of people. However, it's actually listing three groups of people in this verse. First, the souls of those who were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. Second, those who were beheaded for the word of God. And third, those who had not worshipped the beast or received its mark. These three groups are mentioned over and over in the prophecy. For example, in Ezekiel 5, verses 1 through 5, it talks about the hair, which verse 5 tells us represents Jerusalem. And Jerusalem represents, on one level, those who will be rescued. In Revelation 21, it says, New Jerusalem will come down from heaven as a bride. That's the return to the homeland, earth, after the rescue. Ezekiel 5 says Jerusalem will be divided into three parts. One part will be burned with fire in the midst of the city when the days of the siege are fulfilled. The second part will be smitten about with a knife. And the third part will be scattered into the wind. And the sword will be drawn out after they are scattered into the wind. In other words, the knife is the sword and it represents war. The fire, we know, is the asteroid impact. So this is saying that two-thirds of Jerusalem will die. It clarifies that in verse 12. It says, A third part will die with the pestilence and with famine. Another third part will fall by the sword, and another third part will be scattered into the wind. And again, the sword will be drawn out after they are scattered into the wind. The scattering into the wind is clarified in Matthew 24, 31, where it says the angels will gather the elect from the four winds of heaven. So Jerusalem, in other words, New Jerusalem, the bride, which will inherit the earth after the asteroid hits, consists of three parts. Two of those three parts, it says, will die, but then be resurrected later. So two of those parts are the two witnesses. Revelation 11 explains that the two witnesses will be killed by the beast at the end of 1260 years. They will be killed by the beast when the asteroid hits the earth, and after that asteroid, the war starts. So some will die by the pestilence of the asteroid and the famine that follows, and others will die in the war that follows. But there is a third part that will not die at all. There are some who will go to the four winds 
And notice it says they will go to the four winds of heaven before the war. Again and again, the prophecy tells us there is a rescue before the asteroid. And Revelation 7 says that rescue consists of a huge multitude of all tribes and nations that cannot even be counted. So in Revelation 20 verse 4, it's talking about the souls that will live on the earth for a thousand years with God when God returns to earth. And again, those people consist of three groups. Two of those groups are the two witnesses, and the third group is those who do not worship the beast. And this is really important, and it's a mystery that most did not understand, because the two witnesses do worship the beast. The Bible's clear about that. The Bible says Yahweh's the beast. We know they're worshiping Yahweh now. So we know that's true. The prophecy is telling us that they worship the beast, and the beast will kill them. So that's a hard lesson to learn, but they choose to learn it that way. There are many Christians even now saying themselves that they are going to be killed because they know it's part of the prophecy, but what they don't realize is that it doesn't have to be that way for them. They don't have to worship the beast. They can repent now and avoid that. They can pray to be accounted worthy to escape. There are three groups in verse 4 of Revelation 20, just like there are three groups in Ezekiel 5. The King James translation doesn't make that very clear in Revelation 20, but when we look at the original words in the verse, we can see that this word translated as and, number 2532, also means also. So it can also say those who were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, also for the word of God. And this word translated as which, number 3748, also means whoever. So also whoever had not worshipped the beast. So it's confirming that there are three groups. Those who are beheaded for the witness of Jesus, also the word of God. Also, whoever does not worship the beast. So two of these three are the witnesses who do worship the beast unknowingly and will be killed for it. And one of these three is the multitude who do not ever worship the beast. But although we're told the witnesses worship the beast, Revelation 11 tells us they will be saved. It says they will ascend to heaven after they're killed by the beast. So the two witnesses believe they are witnesses for God. They are, for the most part, unaware that they are actually worshiping the beast. So they do inherit the earth with the multitude after the tribulation. However, they choose to put themselves under the beast's authority before the tribulation. Even though they believe the beast is actually God, they have still chosen to follow and support the evil ways of that false god. And so maybe some of them are not bad people per se. I mean, maybe they haven't done anything evil themselves, but they have chosen to put themselves under that authority. So when that authority decides to kill them, God can't save them because they themselves chose the beast over the true God. They chose to support evil over good. So they actually choose to be killed by the beast. And the fact that they will be resurrected by God after the beast kills them just proves how compassionate the true God is. The prophecy says they are deceived by a strong delusion, but they will repent once they learn the true nature of the beast that they now serve. Revelation 11.13 says the remnant will give glory to the God of heaven when the asteroid hits when the two witnesses ascend up. That's the two witnesses. They are killed at that point and then they ascend up. It says the remnant will give glory to the God of heaven when that asteroid hits at the end of the 1260 years. Revelation 12, 17 tells us the remnant are those who have the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's the two witnesses, which refer to the two parts of Jerusalem that will die in Ezekiel 5, but then be resurrected in Revelation 20. Those who do not worship the beast, however, are the multitude. And the prophecy says they will not die, but be rescued when the asteroid hits. So, Every human makes their own choice. They either choose to follow the evil God or the kind God. And the deception is that the churches can save people. They can't. 
Only God can save people, not the church. The churches were built upon Peter, and Jesus said Peter is Satan. So the churches are a deception. They're not the gateway to heaven. They are literally the gateway to hell. Jesus said a minority of those people will escape the tribulation, but most of those people will go through it because they chose to. As unbelievable as it seems, there is literally a huge majority of Christians out there who are consigning themselves to the tribulation. Instead of praying to be accounted worthy to escape, they are literally proclaiming that they are going to go through it. But Isaiah 30, 15 through 17 says God wants to save them, but they say no. They say they will flee upon horses and ride upon the swift. Therefore shall they that pursue you be swift until you be left as a beacon upon the top of a mountain. So they don't want to be rescued. And part of that reason is that they don't understand the danger. They think they can fight the beast on their own because they don't understand what the beast is. They don't understand that the beast is not human. They are not human beings. So basically, they're, they're thinking in their, in their uneducated minds that they can fight aliens and win, that they can fight Terminator and win. So God is saying to them, look, you think you're so powerful and you don't want me, so go ahead. But these other people have humility and intelligence, and they are asking to be saved. Because they understand the threat. And God is not going to ignore them. That's what it says. So God wants to save all the humans. But some of the humans don't want to be saved. But it does say they will change their mind. Because it says they'll be left as a beacon on a mountain later. After they go through the tribulation. And after they see what they are actually up against. Then they will want to be saved. And they will die because of their choice, but they will be resurrected after that. So that's what Revelation 20 verse 4 is confirming. Those three groups that New Jerusalem is split up into. Two of them are the two witnesses and the other group is the multitude. So we'll continue with Revelation chapter 20 next week. For more information, see the playlist linked here. Thank you so much to those who are making this work possible. If you like this video, please consider providing support. I hope you're doing well, and I'll talk to you next week.